Hello and welcome to Creation Tide 5 and our final creation tide. It's very sad, very, very sad. Hello to Father Neil. Hello everybody. <laughs> and hello to Reverend Marcus. <laughs> we're both wearing primary colours today, aren't we? Like, oh, yeah, we are. We're doing quite a good job between you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I went with blue, um, yeah. but it's a very dark blue, you can't really yeah. see it. <laughs> it's because it's um, we're still in amber. Is that so I'm still really in amber right. lockdown, so I'm, uh, I'm wearing it to remind people. I'm that. looking forward to green, isn't it? <laughs> Okay, um, we have decided today that um, we wouldn't pick a particular reading because um, for various reasons, we have a lectionary reading today, we have a creation tide reading, and we also have readings that are specifically for uh, St. Francis of Assisi. So uh, we haven't actually made um, a decision on which readings we should go for. Um, so we hope you can all bear with us whilst we just we talk about creation, spirituality from our own standpoints and uh, and go from there. So uh, my first, my very first um, question to you lovely people today is um, what is spirituality? What do we mean by spirituality? Well, uh Quite, quite different, I think, from a Christian Christian perspective. I guess for a lot of people, spirituality just means um, something to do with the spiritual world. But that could be could be anything, on it? It's kind of gateway into whatever people think that world might be. But for, but for the Christian, Christian spirituality is about a life animated by the Spirit of Christ, isn't it? And so that that gives real shape to it and real direction. And of course, it, the outworking of that can be hugely different depending on our personality giftings and, and so on so it's not like a straitjacket but it does give parameters you know and you keep looking back to to christ as your you know as your yardstick and your inspiration and, and, and it'll you know just to show you what love is like so I, I guess for me it's a spiritual life is a life where you consciously give yourself over to the spirit of christ let that be your you know, to animate you and, and to guide you but and, but where that goes you don't really know you know because you know, where will Christ lead you? What, what, what aspects of your character will Christ bring out? You know, and sometimes the things that you think are important aren't what God has in mind. Really. You know. But we're just talking about St. Jerome. Well, I was talking about St. Jerome this morning, St. Jerome's Day. And it just, we remember him for his Bible, his translation, you know, and, and, and he was gifted with huge intellectual capabilities. But actually, from his point of view, he probably would have wanted to be remembered for his sense of the... Um, monastic religious community that was what kind of animated him as much as anything but that's pretty much forgotten you know and the thing that his legacy is about his um is the bible so the spiritual life is something probably that will lead us in unexpected ways um to bring out fruit that we didn't even know if perhaps we had uh i'm speaking as a franciscan now and so my um spirituality is very um, very defined for me it's very clear but when you strip all of that off and you look at the example of Francis and Claire and we look at the word spirituality that first bit spirit is drawn from the Hebrew ruach um, and so again we've got that idea of spirit but also breath and wind um, and the Pentecost experience and it gives life and animates you um, and Francis felt that gift of the Holy Spirit and, was, uh, and, and received spiritual gifts as a result. But that kind of impelled him forward, that moved him forward. Um, and so I think that for me, Christian spirituality is, yes, it's something that animates a person's life in faith, but it's also about m moving people forwards, not just physically, because Francis left all of his stuff behind um, and famously stripped naked in the square um, and gave all his clothes to the beggars and then went went away but St. Clair felt the same calling but she lived an enclosed life she didn't physically move but she she progressed her faith into greater depths um, and our spirituality as Christians is is based on the doctrines and the teaching of the church, which you can find in scripture 
and in the creed and in the catechism it it's based on our values the way that we um, act towards other people but it's also the way that our beliefs and uh, what we feel is embodied in us and expressed in the way that we live our lives mm. You mentioned, um, Marcus, you mentioned uh, our spirituality, Christian spirituality being quite different to other spiritualities. Can we be more, can we be more specific about that? What do we mean by a Christian spirituality as opposed to um, someone who says that I'm very spiritual, but I'm not religious? Kind of. Yeah, well... Um, I mean, there'll be a lot of similarities, you know, there really will. And um, when you look at the core of a lot of the world, world, world face, you know, and, uh, there's lots of similarities. I wouldn't want to sort of pretend that there's some, that, that, that there's, there's huge differences when, when there are, you know, because I think lo love of neighbour runs through most of the world's religions, you know, and, and um, but at the same time, there, there, are, there are points of departure. So for a Christian spirituality, um, well, it has implications both for the, in the human world and I think and our relationship with the natural world as well. So within the human world, you know, it's a question of really forget, you know, as we talked about last week um, in that passage in Philippians, forgetting oneself, but, you know, being, being a servant, really, you know, absolutely not trying to exalt yourself, leaving that to God, you know, absolutely just serving Christ, serving God, and letting God do the building and, and the exalting. And I think perhaps in terms of contemporary worldly spiritualities, that'd be very different because they would, I would assume, more often be built around trying to chart your own path um, and, um, and uh, build, I don't know, find your place in the world by building yourself up or finding yourself from within. Whereas a Christian one is forget yourself, you know, and, 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 that's, and that's where you'll, you'll find yourself. In relation to engaging with the world, I think, of the spirituality, then as Neil mentioned, this the old the Hebrew word for spirit, ruach, ruach, the wind, the breath, the breath of God. There's that running through our spirituality as well. You know, we've talked of the way that often our Christianity has neglected that connection with, with the earth and uh, with creation and so on. But that, that's at the heart of it um, as well. So that breath of God that animates all things and holds all things in being is the same breath that animates us and, and, and guides us. So that connection with the natural world um, would run through it as well but that's probably an aspect of christian spirituality that that is only that has been neglected um for, for centuries and, and we're rediscovering it afresh now as christians so i want to proclaim pretend that we've held that torch for earth care where mm -hmm. others haven't because that's, that's not really that wouldn't at all be fair but a christian spirituality today would recognize really that love of neighbor encompasses love of creation the non our non-human neighbors um as well and that we're, we're together we're sort of pilgrims on this earth you know brother wind um brother fire you know sister mother earth as st francis describes it the we together pil you know pilgrims um on a journey so that's rather a wonderful dimension i think as well um to a christian spirituality is that it's you're not alone you know we're um the whole earth must come with us you know and we all, all must live and love together thank you when we think about so the 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 recent encyclical from the pope um led out to see which um addresses um the way that we interact with with society makes a big deal of um uh uh a type, an approach, um, which is in, in Latin is lex orande, lex credende. The way you pray and worship determines the way that you believe. And this is what creation tide is all about. It's the fact that creation has largely been ignored um, within our liturgical year. And I mean, Sophie said right at the beginning, oh, you know, there's so many choices. Um, that, that we've been uh, a little bit um, indecisive. But I think we were actually decisively indecisive in that we said we're not going to take 
a, a particular line. Uh, we're not going to look at a particular Bible passage, but we've got to acknowledge um, that there needs to be a conclusion to this season. This season is really important. Um, the seat creation tide and bringing it into the center of our Christian worship. But it, it deserves a good finish. It shouldn't actually just pitter away. Um, and so we, we've, what we've got to do is think, right, what am I going to do this Sunday? How am, am I, or how is our community going to mark the end of creation tide? So for, I know that in the cathedral, you're actually having your harvest festival this Sunday. So that's the big finish. And I know that Marcus is preaching at that and it's going to be live streamed. So guys, uh, check out the cathedral stream. It's going to be, um, it's going to be Mother Sophie's first celebration as well. So the more people that we can have watching, um, the better. Um, so, um, and lots of comments and that sort of stuff. Um, you're going the same color as my, um, as my top. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, we still need to. Um, <laughs> we still need to think about this big finish, but also the the. It's not just about um, the way that we um, the the lex orende lex lex credende the the way you pray and worship determines the way that you believe. Um, it's about it's about uh, former vivende, former orande. That's what the Franciscans say. It's just about actions. It's about it's about doing as well, because it would be very very easy for us as a as churches and as a diocese to um, ring fence creation and our thinking about creation to this season to these five weeks and just say, well, that's when we do it. Mm. That, that's it. Um, and to a certain extent, the church has been guilty of this in its lectionary up until now. You had two or three festivals, including a harvest festival um, and creation Sunday um, and plow Sunday. And that was it. That, but what we're saying is, yes, it's fantastic that creation tide exists. But it's about weaving that into everything that we're doing as a church and as a diocese. And that's something that the bishop wants. She wants us to become an eco-diocese. So don't think about this Sunday as a finish. Think about this Sunday as a springboard. Think about it in that sense. What you've been doing over the last four or five weeks is climbing up those rungs. Um, and now this is, the, this is the, the big finish, yes, but also you're plunging into this pool. Um, you're plunging into creation itself and living and working and praying alongside everything in creation. I think I think you're you're really right there, Neil. About you know, let's not make this an end point, but the, <clears throat> the, the start, a, sp a springboard. And I guess the theme for today, with it being creation and spirituality, get put set in our mind. You know, how how can we begin to um, embed within our Christian spirituality the care for creation, which we know to be a core part of Christianity, but somehow we've let we've let it slip. And there's no, there's no one way to do that, which I think is exciting, you know, um, rather than thinking, oh, no, there's, where's, where's the passage in Paul that says this is what the, you know, as an earth care spirit judge will, will look like. Um, there are lots of different strands, but, but, but that suits different people and personalities and different churches and denominations, possibly. I think that's, that's a strength. So, I mean, if you're trying to construct a, a creation an earth care, creation care, spirituality. And we can take different, different themes from the Bible. So we could, we could, we could say, take a, a wisdom theme, you know, think, looking at Proverbs or whatever, you know, dig a hole and you're going to fall in it. You know, it, it's not hard to, to see how, you know, if we keep um, pillaging the earth, it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come, come and uh, cause us trouble, you know. And so we can come from that angle, sort of wisdom 
and, and um, you know, and, and perhaps learn from ecology and those sorts of disciplines. So, so but that's fruitful. I mean, th thinking about St. Paul, I mean, I guess that this, this always commends itself to me is, is there's amazing verses in Romans 8. So we could take it, we could take a sort of spirituality that takes its lead from the liberation of creation, you know, the setting free, you know, somehow that it's been subjected to futility and trouble and, um, and it's been crossed from being, it's expressing the love of God and sort of singing as it was created to do because of our sort of abuse of it. And it's waiting for us to sort of, for goodness sake, people live as sons of God so that we can live as God's creation too. So that liberation, which I think is rather powerful because it also ties in with our, our need for liberation, which Christ brings from all that ails us, you know, whatever it might be, our, our sinfulness and, the, and so on. So I, I, that, that's, that's a strand that would appeal to me. Or you can take a sort of a wider view, I think, creation spirituality, and maybe think about um, the way Pope Francis talks about our common home, you know, so like the household of God, you know, would be a, re a really good way of trying to frame our response to environmental things because, you know, we're all part of the same family, living in the same house, and I think we can include in our family um, the non-human creation as well, our sisters and brothers you know, that we share the earth with. And but all, the, the household, you've got a, you've got a, you know, you've got a garden, you've got a, your land that you grow your food on. You've got human relationships have got to be at peace, something in a family for it to work, recognizing our differences. But also, there's the whole economy, the whole household economy, you know, and, and as justice has got to be. So it includes all those things. There are different ways of framing. Your, your spirituality and there's no right one right way i think but the only right thing is that we have to try and, and, and achieve that task really the church of england has just released the new book um which has some liturgical resources um it's it's not everything that i hoped it would be it's not as comprehensive as i hoped it would be um but it it does make a really really interesting point which is the fact that creation tide, which runs from the 1st of September to the 4th of October, has within the middle of it um, Holy Cross Day, the feast of the exaltation of, of the cross. Um, and so right in the middle of this creation season, we have Christ's redemptive sacrifice for all of creation. When we think about spirituality and the distinctiveness between Christian spirituality and, and other forms of spirituality, it's that. It's, it's Christ's redemption on the cross mm. for all to save us from our sins and his resurrection and the promise to eternal life. So, yes, I don't know whether it was designed or whether it was accidental, but... Um, the, this new book, which I've just finished reading, is suggesting that when we do Creation Tide, we also make a big deal as part of Creation Tide of this Feast of the Holy Cross. Um, and I think that's a really interesting thing to bring and to explore maybe next year, next Creation Tide, when hopefully we'll be joining you again for another sequence of of these broadcasts if people can yeah. wait that long Neil you know it's hard to hard to imagine that their, their patience would stay well it just so happens <laughs> what just so happens whilst you're on this that I think we've agreed haven't they we are going to meet once a month to do one of these videos so for all of our adoring fans who can't wait on this time next year you're yeah. all in luck yeah <laughs> great, <laughs> great. <laughs> so we'll be bringing you monthly uh, creation resources linked into the Church in Wales lectionary, linked into wider things that are going on. Um, International Water Day, for example, um, and, and things like this. Uh, we'll be giving you little tidbits of activities and resources um, that you can um, access to help your congregation not just to become uh, an eco church but to actually start to think about the way that you live your life as part of god's incarnated creation 
um, and throwing uh, a little bit down, down the screen, of course, we've also got this fantastic resource in the person of the Reverend Marcus Ziblin, who is our diocesan he's creation. He's on my screen, yeah. so he's, he's, he's there on my screen. Oh, is he? <laughs> yeah, okay. and I'm recording. Well, somewhere, <laughs> somewhere in the broadcast, Marcus is there. Yeah. Um, so you don't have to think um, about, oh, right, I've got to wait for the next podcast. Um, Marcus um, is, I'm going to throw him to the wolves now. <laughs> yeah. Marcus is available. Oh, um, and he has a group. As well. There is a diocesan creation care group as well um, behind him. So uh, reach out. Reach out um, and ask for ideas. But you know what would be fantastic? If you reached out and shared ideas with us of what you're mm. doing, that we can then put on next month's podcast... Um, and we can share that practice um, with other people. It doesn't have to be a big grand gesture, particularly as we are in lockdown at the moment. Um, just the little things that you do that you can share with others, the little things add up to making a big difference. Well, that's, that's really true, Neil. It's, it's so encouraging to us, isn't it, to see what people are doing and implementing in, in, in their areas, you know. I mean, so just before we started recording Sophie was describing some hopes and plans that she's got you know got a cathedral really so to maybe create some sort of garden space and you know place to sort of nurture creation and, and create a beautiful place for the community too so um well you know as if that moves to fruition we can talk about that can't we but it's just lovely to hear really lovely to hear and then you were talking Neil about your meadow hopefully in some some areas or in Mary's, yeah, next year we've got this idea for the wildflower cloister um, yeah, and I've, I've got a few ideas. Should I mention it on air? Because I haven't mentioned to the PCC yet, but um, I, I quite fancy growing some, <laughs> 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 some, some Jerome's church. Well, I talked about a medieval garden. We've talked about that actually in the PCC. But I've just got a friend um, locally who grows apples, and he was describing to me some of the varieties he's got. And he's got this great collection of ecclesiastically themed apples. So there's a, a bardsy one that the monks used to grow for brewing cider, which sounds intriguing. And there's, um, there's one from St. Dogmells, I forget, which has got a story and some other saints' apples. So I thought, well, I'd love to grow some of those, you know, really, because they've all got a story to tell and are bound up with the church, but they're also ancient medieval varieties. And being, lo being local ones, of course, they'll encourage our local wildlife and insects, which is what we want. So, um, so maybe, well, who, who knows, maybe in a year we can, we can see some ceilings in the ground. It'd be nice. And before long, you'll be having an ecclesiastical apple pie competition. Oh, that's, that's an idea. Yeah, yeah. there's one. And then also, after seven in the evening, there'll be ecclesiastical cider competition. <laughs> <laughs> well, the hoping will compliment the pie one. You know. <laughs> but um, I like what you said, Neil, about... Um, oh, sorry. So Neil talked about this um, Holy Cross Day. Well, when does that fall again, Neil? The, uh, 14th of September. So it's, is it's in the middle. Of that, that's, that's, that is there. fantastic. I hadn't quite realised that. That's at, what a place to have it. That is just such a gift, isn't it? Because... You know, as St Paul writes in Colossians, you know, that when he talks about Christ being for, for all of creation, the firstborn of all creation, all things made for him and through him, and, and he's going to redeem all things by making peace for the blood of his cross. You know, that's, that's the heart of it, isn't it? Is that Christ died for, you know, so loved the world that he gave his life, not, not just us, us humans. Possibly that's at the core of a Christian spirituality as well, is that this sense that Christ unifies all, you know, all things. It's not just about us and our destination, but there's no redemption for us unless the earth also is healed and, and united in the blood of Christ's cross. That's pretty special. That's quite unique, I think, amongst the different earth care spiritualities that I've come across when I've been reading, you know, from other traditions. I, um, I was thinking about your tapestry that you mentioned before we started filming, Marcus, and um, mm. I was thinking how how tapestries are woven together and um I'm, I'm a creative kind of person so the the thought of weaving spirituality into everything that we do including uh, creation uh, our, our efforts to to look after our environment um our efforts to do anything that we do our spirituality has to be a part of that 
I was also thinking about um, I've also been thinking about an artist called Joseph Boys, and I don't know if this is going to work. So I'm going to try sh sharing my screen. I don't know if that's going to work on the recording, so we'll give it a go. And uh, I found a picture um, of a piece of artwork that this chap did, and I don't know if you guys know this chap. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you can see it. I don't know if it's going to get any bigger. Can Can you still see it on the recording or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you normally can. Awesome. Not. So, uh, this chap, Joseph Boyce, is an artist who he he took the symbols of uh, Francis of Assisi, so the the covering himself up in sackcloth, and uh, he spent time in the world in a in a room basically with coyotes. These are wild coyotes that he was in the room with, um, and he just. If for me, it just reminds me of this kind of relationship between um, between the environment, our animals, and um, and us as humans. This is a particularly good picture. I liked this picture. Um, and they, you know, as I was saying, I, I don't know how well it's going to show up on the recording, but um, it's particularly poignant for me. I thought this kind of image of this man who. Mm he took the sim the symbolism as 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 i say and he just spent he spent days in this room with these animals and eventually by the time i don't know if there's still recordings of it but by the time he'd finished these animals had come to be part of they were he was part of the pack he was no longer a stranger he had become part of that that um part of creation and um for me that was really symbolic of of what we've been talking about over the last five weeks it's just mm. this, this idea that actually humans and creation can work together and we do we should work together and eventually um we we become one again which is where we should be anyway if that makes sense right. you're right really. i mean that, that <laughs> yeah. was um you know in in the prophecy of isaiah that passage that begins about the shoot shall come forth from the from the root of Jesse, and then it moves into a description of, of the Messiah, you know, which we, we as Christians read, read to be Christ. And it, but it goes on to, to describe how you know, the wolves shall dwell, but when, um, when the world is judged in righteousness, according to this Messiah, then the wolf will dwell with the kid, the, the leopard will lie down with the lamb. I've got those all around, haven't I? And um, uh, there's that sort of sense of a, a peace between... between um, well, it's not, it's not so much between the animals, it's between, what's interesting is, it's between the wild animals and the domestic animals, you know, mm. between the human world and, and, the, and the wild world. And the reference that the artist is making there directly is to a story in the Fioretti, which are the little flowers of St. Francis, mm. which are semi-apocryphal stories about St. Francis. But one of them is about Francis and the wolf of Gubbio, and the wolf was terrorising the town and eating all the livestock. And Francis did that thing that he does, where he just walked up and he held out his hand and the wolf sniffed his hand. And then suddenly the wolf was following Francis around like a dog. Um, and then the, the, when Francis left Gubbio, the wolf stayed there and became like a, a protector of, of the town. And we have this, this idea of, um, you know, the, the, the domestic animals and the wild animals coming together, as, as Marcus pointed out. I, I don't want to anticipate our Christmas broadcast. <laughs> Crumbs. Okay. <laughs> but um, at the beginning of December, I'm going to be talking about the fact um, that when it comes to the nativity, the very first nativity was put on by Francis and it used real animals and it was because he was concerned that the people in the valley were um, using that time Christmas as a time of revelry um, and they had kind of gone down the secular route and stopped connecting with the nativity story sound familiar and so he went out um, and he he got these animals together and he got a young mother and a young father to play Mary and Joseph. Um, and so from that central 
um, vision, that central um, story, um, the, the people of the town were reconnected because suddenly we are connecting Christ's incarnation as a child. And the fact that the, the nativity narratives in Luke say that there are animals there, sort of like, you know, that he's in that, that stable um, element. Uh, so there's something that we, we can explore uh, there. I'm not saying that we've all got to get real animals in our churches. Um, although this Sunday, as the, the finish to creation season, um, I'm leading a pet service um, in the yard in uh, Wisson, um, in St. Mary Magdalene's Wisson. Um, it's not going to be live streamed, but a YouTube video of it will be on the Daigleth ILMA uh, Facebook page um, and, and the YouTube um, channel as well. So um, that's so that we can edit it slightly because, you know, do you remember the famous Blue Peter <laughs> incident? <laughs> Um, so yeah, we don't we don't want to have any animal genitals um, being live streamed on. Um, <laughs> so if you've, you've gone redder than you were before. Oh, yeah. uh, animal genitals um, on the uh, web page. So uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do some editing and, and that sort of stuff. But that's that's something that you could explore for next year. Um, is a pet service? Is an animal service? It really brings people in, particularly mm. um, the youngsters. And in the past, I've blessed Woody the Woodlouse um, because, <laughs> you know, they didn't have any uh, pets in the household. So they went out to the back garden and just picked up a, a flower pot and collected some of the wood lice and put, it, put them in a jar um, with some compost and that sort of stuff, brought them to church. So I blessed Woody the Woodlouse and then they, he was taken back and put back in the garden. Um, all sorts of options available to you. So thank you to both of you for joining me today for this final episode of Creation Tide. <laughs> the good news is, the good news is we will be back next month. Hurrah! Hurrah! <laughs> Hurrah! Um, before we go, though, if you have any ideas or resources or thoughts that perhaps you'd like us to share with the rest of the diocese on this Creation Tide video and podcast, perhaps you would like to send them to Marcus. And I'm going to hand over to Marcus now, and he's going to give you details as, as to how you might do that. Oh, right. I guess um, just uh, send emails with the best way, isn't it? Um, uh, Marcus Zippelin at cinw.org.uk. Cinw is for, for Church in Wales, isn't it? Um, anyway, any clergy will have that uh, on their that email. Uh, otherwise, give me a ring 01437 899 548 and we can pick it up that way. But yeah, it'd be lovely to hear, hear anything that's going on. We're, we're great encouragement, I think, as well. And if you see any of us around, if you, you know, if you happen, to, you happen to bump into us in Tesco and you've got a burning idea about something you're going to do in church with your courgettes or with your apples or whatever, then, yeah, just stop us and say hello. Tell us that you watch the, the, uh, the podcast um, and, um, yeah, help us to feed back to others. Hopefully we can grow a community um, in this diocese. Mm. Thank you, Neil. I'll put the details, Marcus's details and everybody else's details at the end of this video. So if you've got any ideas or thoughts, then you can get be in contact with us. Um, and I'll also put all of the other resources that we've mentioned at the end of this video today as well. And then myself, Neil and Marcus will be back um, next month. We haven't decided whether it will be the beginning or the end of next month. We haven't got that far yet, but as soon as we know, we'll let you know. <laughs> Um, you take care of yourselves. Um, the one of you want to say a prayer for us all before we finish. Neil, you up for that? Yeah, absolutely. Excellent. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of your creation and the part that we are called to play in it. We thank you for the redemptive power of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for all creation and promises eternal life to those who believe in him. 
we thank you for the opportunity that we've had to come together over these past five weeks to share with good humor and with insight words from scripture from tradition and from our practice we pray god's blessing on everyone who has accessed this material that together we may be able to build a strong community of faith in wales and across the world that is dedicated to creation care in Jesus' name and in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you.